What's up, everybody? Welcome to this week's edition of the weekly update. It is December 12th, 2021. I'd like to kick it off uh, and announce that the Ergo Foundation paperwork has cleared uh, by ACRA in Singapore, and we are officially a, a nonprofit. Now, that is a big step for us. We've been working on that for months. I'd like to uh, thank Justin. Uh, Simpson, who is an Ergo Foundation member. Uh, without his help and assistance there, this probably wouldn't have been possible. Um, it definitely is something that builds a strong foundation for us um, to start growing, building on. Uh, getting incorporated and having a legal counterparty was something that was a bottleneck for Ergo in terms of market development. And uh, I'm really happy to say that, you know, now that we have cleared that bottleneck, we have the ability to start gaining momentum. Uh, I would ask the community to give me a little bit of runway. I'm already talking to some potential partners. Um, and uh, I hope to bring some things to market uh, as soon as I can. Now, one thing to remember is that Ergo is a unique blockchain right there's a lot of blockchains out there that are essentially evm clones or uh, forks that have minor modifications and so the pathway to integration for um, exchange teams is a pretty quick process uh, it's you know pretty much a replication from one system to the other ergo is a different animal uh, we're coming to them with a new code base new scripts um, and so that takes time, you know, it takes time, it takes testing. There's often a lot of money at stake. So um, please uh, give me a little bit of patience, give me a little runway, and uh, I hope that we'll be able to take off. Now, I was talking with Alex this week uh, about our upcoming hackathon. Uh, we have two ideas at the moment. Uh, one of them is about building and tokenizing on top of Virgo, and the other is privacy. Um, I did see, uh, you know, I think two weeks ago, uh, Crypto Cream, one of our community developers, was doing a proactive um, security application that basically was a blockchain vis visualizer. <laughs> and uh, I think that type of proactive security model makes a lot of sense for us. Uh, personally, I would like to see um, applications like that that track, you know, what type of metadata leaks from the Ergo ecosystem and how can we mitigate that? How can we uh, secure the P2P layer? Um, how can we potentially come up with some unique solutions for mining and hardening mining to where um, even against, you know, let's say high level adversaries, the system is resilient. So I'm going to throw that out there to the community so people can start thinking. Uh, developers can start formulating what makes sense for them if they want to participate. Um, hopefully, we'll kick off both of those. I imagine February uh, is going to be the first one. I'm not sure which. There's just been a lot of internal change, a lot of things in motion, which is good. Uh, but, you know, it does uh, create an extra juggle. Plus, I'm doing these videos now which I didn't see coming, but I'll keep doing them since you guys uh, are asking. So let's uh, dive in. So Alex starts off the uh, update with his normal, let's chat a bit. Please share your updates. I have to give Alex a lot of credit for showing up every week and uh, engaging with developers. Uh, that's something that's kind of unique to the Ergo ecosystem and brings a lot of value, you know. Um, kind of like family I guess you know shows up every time so thank you for that uh, looks like we're gonna start off with Lado pixel uh, we have a new ergo tutorial uh, in Portuguese and in German or Deutsch no I don't speak German well sorry guys uh, it looks like he's also working on updating 
a couple of websites uh, for NFTs and tokens. And it looks like we are getting a dApp for the simultaneous sending of NFTs. I know many of you that are um, into the NFT trade, I will appreciate that. Next we go to Morphic. Uh, he's working on the 5.0 update. Um, it looks like that's in review. Looks like we have some new... Uh, he's updated the REST API client in the app kit. Um, he's reviewing some Ergo, app kit, and mobile uh, PRs. So he's onboarded a new Scala developer for the Explorer backend. And uh, I know he's been busy with a couple of other Ergo Foundation activities. Um, looks like next up, uh, we're going to get a new version of the app kit and uh, some additional testing and coverage for just-in-time costing, which is a big part of the 5.0 upgrade that we're moving towards. And then we have uh, Money David, who's uh, hopped in to say hi. Uh, next we have Green Hat. <laughs> I always think Green Hat's name is funny. You know, you have the white hat, you have the black hat, and now we got the green hat. Just make sure we pay the guy, right? Uh, Tim is working on the C and Swift bindings for iOS developers. That's a pretty big deal. Um, if you're an iOS developer out there, um, you know, we're trying to get tooling to support you to come on and start playing with Ergo. Uh, we also have implemented uh, peer management and the Ergo P2P layer. That's uh, Soizer. And Sans is working on distributed signature uh, implementation. Looks like he's planning to continue the NepoPal uh, verification and working with the P2P network layer design of that. He's uh, looking into other blockchains that are um, in Rust and getting up to speed with uh, building in Rust. I would love to see a uh, reference client that's uh, primarily Rust. That would be awesome, uh, long-term goal. Next we have uh, Louis Vatra, who's working on his NFT copy detection tool. Um, looks like there's still some low-class criminals hanging out in the auction house. Please be sure to check. Um, you know, we do have a Discord for Ergo NFT artists. I would say if uh, when in doubt, just go and talk to the artists themselves. Have them take a look. I'm sure they would be happy to, uh, eh, let's just say, encourage their products rather than someone who's trying to rip them off. Um, it looks like the tip bot is on hold for a little bit, and that's okay. Uh, still looking forward to that. And it looks like he has joined the Aneta, I'm going to say Anetna BTC, um, helping spring, streamline their airdrop and uh, getting participation lists together. Uh, I know there are many of you that are excited that we have a couple of projects finally tokenizing on top of Ergo. Um, Anetna is one of them. Uh, they're working with wrapping uh, Bitcoin and getting that onto Ergo, and it looks like eventually Cardano as well. I did uh, talk to their uh, CEO this week um, briefly, uh, just covering how I could potentially help, and uh, you know, they're happy to do open source, open code, work with the community, go through the community review. And I appreciate that. I think that's uh, one of the best ways to offer assurance. Too much these days is being tokenized and built in secret. Um, and I just think that uh, damages the mindshare. You know, extended UTXO is new, especially relative to EVM uh, libraries and frameworks. So the more we can work together open source, uh, we're building the adoption of a new system. Uh, extended UTXO has parallelism and security 
uh, kind of built in. It's better to scale. But that's something that we need to build towards. And I think that the best way to do that is through open source community mindshare rather than behind closed doors. So um, thank you for supporting that. Uh, next, we hear from Haley PDL. Uh, he's working on a game. I have no idea what the game is, but I'm sure there's a lot of gamers uh, that would be excited to play some blockchain games. Um, looks like he's got the diagrams for smart contracts. Uh, he's working with compiling. And uh, the next step is to work with the admin screen and debug. So, you know, those of you that are interested, pay attention. I think that's awesome to see. Next, we hear from MHS Sam. Uh, the Sussy Bridge is progressing fast. That's good to hear. Uh, the contract design is finished. The issue contract is done. Uh, we're working on the lock governance and probably unlock contract in the next few days. Uh, the off-chain logic implementation has already started. So it looks like he's shooting for two weeks to have the first uh, working version. Uh, we have a group chat going uh, with the other side of the bridge and that development support has been uh, pretty good lately. And so I'm really excited to see that come together. I do think that uh, adding liquidity into Ergo Dex, uh, adding support from, for let's say non-native tokens in the Ergo Mixer is a big step for us. Uh, it's, you know, hopefully the first step in a long journey of uh, introducing Ergo and the features that we offer to other assets. It looks like uh, Raffle is going well. As we're still working on tokenization research and figuring out uh, what is the best way forward, but uh, I have reviewed some of uh, Sam's ideas and I think they're good. I think the community will be happy with how that comes together. It's kind of a neat way to build on top of Raffle, but I will wait for him to um, announce that. Next, we hear from Alex. 4.0.17 is finalized and being tested. Um, it looks like there were a couple of network issues. Um, so he, it looks like there's a new release of 4.0.16.1 and 4.0.16.2 that are working to uh, ease that issue. I actually was trying to sync a full node. Um, <laughs> on a new computer and uh, was running into a little bit of issues with that so I'm glad that uh, we we're gonna see an update because uh, that was giving me a little bit of problems but it's been solved at this point um, looks like for bootstrapping the UTXO set snapshot uh, he's working on networking messages uh, looks like we're seeing more review and testing as we move towards you know 5.0 um, we launched a community voting uh, to allow the community to try to get some kind of consensus around the soft fork proposal and there's a couple of options on the table uh, we want to hear from people you know if you're a miner uh, your vote matters you know your voice matters Please uh, let us know um, what your thoughts are, and uh, hopefully we can, you know, come to some consensus and, you know, proceed in a way that uh, kind of keeps the social integrity of the network. These type of things are never always, uh, let's just say, totally friendly, but that's, you know, it's a big choice. So please uh, give us your input. It looks like he reviewed uh, Haley PDL's contracts for the game and uh, the profit sharing contracts. Next, we go to Mr. Stahlfelge. He's always busy with wallets. What do he do this week? 
Um, it looks like he made some additions and changes to the app kit and then is actually building out some new features in the iOS wallet. Um, it looks like we're going to have implemented biometrics and uh, keychain support. That's pretty sweet. So I guess if you have an iOS, um, your fingerprint will help unlock the wallet. I don't have an iOS, so I haven't really been able to play with that implementation at all. But uh, from all accounts, the testing is going well. That's good to see. Um, looks like the new build will roll out of closed beta, and uh, we'll have a release candidate here pretty soon. Um, it looks like he also needs to update his repo because calling it uh, just Android doesn't fit anymore because we're about to get on iOS as well. And uh, Sam said that uh, we got good feedback from Marcelo uh, for his magical artwork. Yeah, I have to say Marcelo's art is uh, next level, really. I can't uh, give enough compliments there. You know, he brings a lot of skill and experience to the table. Um, that's actually something that he does, you know, as uh, beyond a hobby. <laughs> so, thank you, Marcelo. Uh, keep up the good work. Yeah, I know the feeling every Wednesday. I'm perplexed another week has gone by. You're telling me, man. <laughs> I'm... Yeah, I feel like I'm doing these a lot lately, which I don't mind. Last week, you know, people were saying, oh, you looked sad. And I was like, well, today I'm doing this at 12.55 a.m. my time. Uh, last week I did it probably a little bit later even. And uh, sometimes I get stuck between a point where I need to stay up and finish things. But I would love to have some coffee. And uh, if I had coffee, I couldn't sleep. So it's heartbreaking. But uh, in terms of the ergo development, things are going really well. Um, you know, I'm, I'm really happy to see the community putting so many things out there. If you look at uh, the Sigma Knot um, kind of landing page of all the things that are being built by the community, that's growing at a pretty rapid clip, and that's great to see. So next we hear from uh, Apex Theory. He's uh, working with the Nepo Pal Sync. Um, that's something that's been on our roadmap since Alex pretty much uh, started mainnet. It's been a journey, and uh, it's exciting to see that come together. Ilya, what were you up to? Uh, looks like he's working on indexer for on-chain data and uh, working on an analytics app this week. Uh, we're also doing kind of a strategic review of Ergodex to launch. Looks like he's trying to build a full DeFi ecosystem. Um, that's his long-term goal at this point, which is pretty impressive. I know he did the unveil um, on Ergo Pulse, and uh, I believe some people said, hey, we want to see some more tooling and, you know, uh, let's just say fanciness in the UI, and it looks like he's uh, working on that. So let's see, you know, what gets integrated where and how that comes out. Oof, that's a username I'm going to destroy. Ty Cut. I'm just going to say, we're just going to call him Big T. Big T is working on uh, token burn functionality which is actually pretty neat in Ergo. Um, one thing that uh, you have to keep in mind is due to storage rent, uh, you can burn tokens, but I guess like a phoenix from the ashes, they can get recycled back into the network eventually. Um, but having a token functionality, I think, is a good idea. Next, we hear from Anand Burr, who is 
working uh, with Emergo on uh, optimizing Uroi. So uh, it looks like he's working on a sync issue that showed up this week um, and has been looking into performance enhancements. We are still working on Ledger. I know there's a lot of people that are not so happy with the uh, timing of that, but you know we found a little bug and uh, we want to make sure that that bug doesn't end up uh, creating issues for people. So it looks like we have another uh, minor issue that's being ironed out before it's pulled into Uroi. You know, I would rather see it caught now and be delayed a little bit than have people lose money. Uh, that's often the trade-off in these situations. Additional testing is always a good idea because it protects the user is the bottom line. Um, we do have a ability to support Ledger today. In order to do that, you have to transfer your ERG to Waves Exchange and uh, Waves Exchange to Ledger. There is uh, Ledger support on that exchange for the ERG token. It's kind of a roundabout way to get there, but if it's a big concern, you know, it, it's something you could get done now versus waiting for us to uh, implement this into Uroi. Uh, Anon Burr is also working on a paper wallet, and it looks like we have multiple languages uh, being pulled into the paper wallet. That's really great to see. Uh, thank you for all of the native speakers that uh, worked on translations. You know, that kind of thing really is needed. So it looks like we have a lurker that finally came out and uh, decided to uh, drop an update. That's awesome. Welcome, curbside profit. Uh, this week, it looks like he launched a chain grabber on Raspberry Pi 4 um, that's syncing with the Ergo blockchain. Uh, looks like a few hiccups in hardware optimization. He's decided to give kind of a step-by-step -step for future Raspberry Pi users. I do know that there's been a group of uh, people in the community um, that have been playing around with running full nodes and the mixer and uh, Ergodex bots all on these little Raspberry Pis, which is really neat to see because you know they're pretty low cost, um, pretty low cost hardware. And one natural benefit of the uh, UTXO model is since you have things running both you know on and off chain, that infrastructure support. Um, potentially can have some economic benefit to it. As an example, you could run off-chain bots on a Raspberry Pi. You can run, uh, you know, potentially the new Oracle framework on a Raspberry Pi. And so, ideally, it takes something with really minimal hardware, and uh, you kind of become a light miner of, of some sort. It's kind of neat to see. Uh, let's see. Next week, um, he's going to work with some on-chain metric exploration. And uh, yeah, I agree with him what he's saying uh, for random musings that uh, if we can get, let's say, a way for Raspberry Pis um, to sync nodes and run infrastructure that is pretty much, uh, let's call it idiot proof. You know, so easy your grandma could do it. That would be amazing. There's a lot of users that I think would participate uh, if the actual integration process is simple enough for them to follow and, and use. And, you know, we all start somewhere. That's something that uh, I end up saying a lot, but it's just the truth, you know. So if you're out there and you have a Raspberry Pi and you want to start playing with it, uh, with the Ergo system, let us know. I'm sure there are some people that would be happy to give you feedback. Let's see. So it's uh, Luvatra on that same point is saying that uh, Crypto Cream 
and Gaza have spent uh, some time playing with Raspberry Pis and making optimized builds and guides. Um, yeah, getting that information out would be pretty cool. I actually got my nephew one. Uh, so if he can spin up a Raspberry Pi, I'll send him some ARG. Uh, next we hear from Frosty. Uh, looks like the core dev and research team are working on um, using ergo native assets to buy Bitcoin via Ren. And uh, looks like they're building out a team of engineers to work on kind of the foundational concept, ergo script, node API, light nodes, nepo pals, hierarchical keys, multi-sigs, and UTXO state. Uh, the community dev team is working with airdrop mechanics and uh, working with uh, Discord and Telegram to start building the community member database for their airdrop. That's nice to see. So yeah, I, you know, just kind of reading through this real quick. Um, let's let's try to push out some Raspberry Pi support, some Node support. You know, long term, that's something I would love to see on top of the Node. I know there's a couple of projects that are playing around with uh, building full Node wallets. I think having the ability to bootstrap a full Node wallet and actually having tooling like infrastructure tooling built into it is a great long-term idea and that way potentially someone could become you know they're not really a miner they're more of like a infrastructure support uh, that's you know potentially profitable it's potentially a way to earn a little bit of erg I don't think it's gonna make anyone a whale overnight but um, you know there's a lot of people out there that probably would uh, be happy to play with that so next we hear from Ezio. Uh, Ergo Funds backend is done. They're cleaning up, uh, you know, basically what they've built, and uh, yeah, it looks like that's coming together. Uh, we have Platypus hop on and say, you know, will there be a blog post covering the benefits of just in time versus? AOT costing uh, when V5 launches. Yeah, I think there will be. I know Morf Morphic uh, is still doing some testing, and I'm sure that data uh, can be gathered. Um, if he does a write-up, I'm sure I'd be happy to help. Uh, we do have some writers that uh, have been contributing to the blog that would be happy to uh, hop on and help clean that up if needed. Next, we hear from GitBlock. Uh, Get Block, for those of you that don't know, is a community uh, smart pool. So you mine through smart contracts. Uh, the goal is to displace these uh, big mining pools that, uh, you know, kind of sell a service but don't really, I don't know, aren't really too invested in the Ergo ecosystem. They're invested in selling uh, software to miners and kind of sitting in the middle taking a cut. Uh, Get block, you know, it was kind of created to uh, disintermediate them. Now, one thing that's pretty cool about what they're trying to build is if enough miners uh, mine to Get block, uh, the way the smart contract is set up, a 51% attack would not be possible. Uh, just the smart contract would prevent that. So that's uh, kind of the end goal. Uh, for that particular pool, which is something I support. I think that's a really neat concept and idea. And, you know, as you can tell, reading through these, uh, we're getting a lot of development on that pool. You know, the possibility to expand uh, their servers to Brazil and Turkey, uh, that's, that's great to see. Next, we hear from the ErgoPad team. 
Leif Erikson is working on finishing the sales contract. Um, I believe at this point uh, they will have already released some information regarding their tokenomics on their website. Um, there may also be, I don't know the exact term, some kind of fundraising seed uh, round that if people are you know, interested, uh, they can participate in that kind of thing. I can only say manage your risk, trade well. Um, you know, in talking with uh, Ergopad, uh, they have committed to being open source and working with the community. And I do believe, uh, actually, they've already started kind of uh, having Alex look through some of their contracts. Um, but it looks like, uh, you know, they're kind of bootstrapping and trying to kick off a project. That's one of those things in order to build things on blockchain it does take time it does take energy it does take money um so you know I, I can't say that i'm against people uh covering their costs but uh, the best thing they can do is be transparent give their word and keep it and uh so i hope ergopad uh does that and i hope they build great things i'd be really happy to see that uh, next we got an update from abc chris this is a pretty good one, guys. You got to check it out. Um, Ergo Watch, which is a uh, kind of surveillance uh, analytic tool on top of uh, the Ergo blockchain that uh, ABC Chris put together, is now running metrics. Uh, so it's kind of working its way towards a glass node type uh, interface where you can watch uh, changes in the Ergo ecosystem uh you know do analytics understand okay what are different uh trends very nice let's see next we have gnunian <laughs> oof i'm murdering your names guys if so i'm sorry uh looks like we have a front-end developer that's uh learning React is probably uh, most useful as in terms of what I've seen implemented. Um, we could definitely use some more front-end developers across the Ergo ecosystem. You know, we started with a team that uh, was pretty heavy on the back end. <laughs> and uh, usually if you get people that work on, you know, functional programming and... Uh, let's say back-end development the front end isn't always the sexiest but you know having these I would say more art oriented uh, developers coming in and making everything beautiful is just finishing touch so uh, if you're out there and you have the skills to uh, build and react um, yeah let us know I'm sure there's some teams that would be happy to work with you Uh, next, we hear from Anon Real. So he has put together a team for the auction house, uh, which will start working pretty much full time on it in about a week, and uh, that will give Anon some freedom to uh, build other things, which is really exciting. Uh, you know, Anon Real has been with us for a long time, and uh, I think that as Ergo team comes out. That's going to offer a lot of value to the ecosystem. Um, you know, as we get some perhaps new frameworks built on uh, ErgoScript, um, I think we can do some neat things. And I would say Anon is a pretty high level dev that can help us uh, do that. Next, we hear from Zygomatic about uh, a Firebase alternative. Uh, Pragmaxime uh, is removing the on-chain registry cache. Our cache was uh, painful for him. Sorry to hear that, buddy. I hope you're healing from the experience. 
Uh, so it looks like he spent a lot of time on that. Uh, it looks like that pretty much that pretty much covers it for this week. Thanks for taking the time to go through the update. I'll see you next week.